Good rainy morning, everyone. I am sitting in um, Michelle Davis's Honors Writers Workshop course to talk to you about student enrollment. Um, if you post content on the page that's interactive, that means that students post back, like a discussion forum, an online digital assignment, or a quiz, then students must be enrolled to participate. So there's two methods to do that. Either you as the teacher can manually enroll them or students can self-enroll. And so I am gonna show you both of those methods. I'm gonna start by going into the page settings. So I'm gonna um, go into edit settings in the settings block, which is often on the left. And right now, I just the important parts before enrollment is that the course is available. Um, right now, if it says this course is not available to students, that means it's hidden from the public. So I'm going to change that to this is available to students. And then you can choose whether or not to allow guest access. I will talk about that in a separate video. And then you also have the ability if you want to set an enrollment password, but that's in a different place. So I'm gonna click on Save Changes. So now this is a public course that students would be able to see in the directory. So as the teacher, you have the ability, let's just say you have your class list in front of you, you can manually enroll students. So I'm gonna click on Users and I'm gonna click on Enrolled Users. And you can see that I have added Oliver Oslin to this course. So the way that I had done that is I click on Enroll Users and the default role will be Student. And you need to type in some part of the student name. It can be first or last. Um, you do not need to do the whole name, but oops. Sorry, my fault. You click on Enroll Users, and then you press Return after that. It'll bring up anybody with that text string in their name. So I am going to click on Enroll for Evelyn, who's actually going into first grade. Yay. And then I say Finish Enrolling user Users, and you can see that she's added to this class list as a student user. Now I'm going to do something funky. I'm going to hop over to a different browser where I'm not logged in as an administrator to Moodle. And I'm going to log in as Oliver, Oliver the third grader, so you can see what it looks like when a student gets enrolled by their teacher. You click log in, and um, as a result of adding him to the course, if he clicked on my courses, he should see the short name, HWW Davis, under his My Courses option in the navigation block. Also, if he clicks on My Home, that lists all the courses he's enrolled in as well. So that would be in there right here, Honors Writers Workshop. So I am going to log out. So if I go, I got this in the way right now. That's a whole different thing. So I get to log out and I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to remove Oliver. So I'm going to click and I'm going to remove him from the course because now we're going to talk about um, the other enrollment options, um, which is having students enroll themselves, like in a computer lab. So now we'll take a look at the whole self-enrolling. So if, as the teacher, I go to my settings block, I go under users, and I go under enrollment methods, it's going to bring me to a page that looks like this. And right now, self-enrollment appears to be turned off, so I'm going to unhide that, and I am going to click on edit. And in here, what you could do, if you wanted to, is you could put a little enrollment key. And this is really what this does if you do put a key in there. So I'm just going to put um, P-O-P, pop. If you put a key in there, what that does is that that um, is going to prevent other students in our system from enrolling in the course. Personally, I think it's just one more barrier to getting the, the students in there. And so I don't necessarily recommend it, but it's you're certainly able to do it. And I am going to um, put it in there so you can see what that looks like for the student. So I'm going to click on Save Changes. Oh, I don't need that. That won't come up for you. That's a different piece of software of mine. All right, so now I'm going to go in as Oliver again. And... This is how he would enroll in that course if he was taking Honors Writers Workshop from Michelle Davis. 
he would um, log in, so he would. it's important that he's got an active login in the upper right hand corner. And then he navigates to the course, so he's going to click on Hopkins High. He's going to go to the Language Arts Department, and there's three pages of um, courses here, and so it's not on the first page, so we go to the second page. Or did I miss it on that first page? Let me go back. Let me look again. Oh, there it is, my bad. All right, so I click on that page and notice that it says an enrollment key, which I set as POP POP. And then you click on enroll me in this course. And had she not set a key, then instead of being prompted for the key, the student would have gone automatically in here. And then on the left side, there would have been a button to enroll me. So that would have been a little easier for the student. So two options for enrolling in a course. One is that the teacher does it manually, and the other is you can have the students um, self-enroll.